All right, so I want to look at trig functions and what trig functions are. They start off simple, but they, they grow in complexity. So the Greeks didn't measure angle like we did. They looked at triangles and they recognized with a right triangle that if it's constructed such that this angular portion was such that the opposite side to the adjacent opposite one opposite two and this would be adjacent to I will put a hypothesis that these ratios were always the same and so whatever controlled the spreading would make the ratios the same. And so they talked about the sine of an angle being the ratio of the opposite side over the hypothe hypotenuse. And if that angle was the same, this ratio would always be the same. And the cosine of an angle was the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And the tangent of the angle was the opposite over adjacent. And these three are the building blocks that we will come back to. We'll use the other of the six trig, trig functions, but these three are, are, are the building blocks. And that set up the monomic Sakatoa. Sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. Now because these are fractions, I can invert the fraction. So if I flip the fraction upside down, I get the cosecant. If I flip this fraction upside down, I get the secant. And Oops, always put the angle here for the same angle. That's hypotenuse over adjacent. Sorry about that. And that's adjacent over opposite. And so th these functions were a way of talking about angle when the Greeks weren't measuring ang angle like we were. They were measuring these ratios. And these ratios they could work out and they could make sure the same had the same angle. And then they figured out how many angles were in a circle, using pi, and a lot of things were added to the concept. But let's start with this, because the next thing we're going to do is we are going to make a unit circle. We're going to take the idea of having a vector that's exactly one long, and we're going to divide... Our quadrant into some set angles and the set angles we're going to use is 0 degrees 30 degrees 45 degrees 60 degrees and 90 degrees and that will that makes a fourth of a circle in the first quadrant for us and we'll look at it at extending it now there's a particular reason why the Greeks chose these particular angles and we're, we're going to use the, 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 some simple constructions to e extend that idea. So let's find the values of each of these functions for these angles. Let me come over here. And so here's what the Greeks did. Um, in deciding on how, how to get useful information out of this. So, whoof, whoops, didn't mean to draw that. Let me change color here. What we're going to first do is we're going to draw a triangle. And we're going to draw a specific triangle. Um, now, granted, my drawing of it might not do it complete justice. But this is an equilateral triangle with each side having unit length. Now, this is not a right triangle. Each one of these angles is 60 degrees. 
But if we bisect this angle and make a right angle out of it, that creates an angle here. Whoops. Wrong drawing utility. Sorry. Beta. What happened here? I hit the wrong thing. Let's try it again. There we go. There's beta. And beta would be 30 degrees because I've bisected this angle. I've cut it in half. And that cuts this side in half and it makes a right angle. Which means that this length is one half. And so this triangle here, not the whole equilateral triangle with sides of one, um, has, and I'll just draw by hand here, a 60 degree angle and a 30 degree angle, a side of one half and a hypotenuse of one. So this side, using the Pythagorean theorem, that one squared equals my unknown side, which I'll call a squared plus one half squared. So 1 squared minus 1 fourth equals a squared, or 3 fourths equals a squared, or a equals the square root of 3 over 2. And so now I have my triangle. And so I can set, use my Sakatoa. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the 30 degree. So for 30 degrees, the sine... Uh, and we'll look at 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. But for right now, we're looking at 30 degrees. And we're going to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Now, Sakatoa said that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, or 1 half over 1. So sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. The cosine of 30 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, or 3 halves, or whoops, I'm sorry, root 3, root 3 over 2. I figured it out here, didn't write it nicely there, sorry about that. And then in the tangent is opposite 1 half over adjacent, so it's 1 half over root 3 over 2. So the twos cancel. I get one over root three. And if I rationalize the denominator, I get root three over three. And so we have found 30 degrees. Well, we can also find 60 degrees here. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine is root three over two. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's one half. And tangent is opposite, root 3 over 2 over 1 half, or root 3. And now we're going to create another triangle to find the angle 45. And so what we do is we take a unit square, where each side is 1, and we make its diagonal. Now, this has been proven in other places that the hypotenuse or the diagonal is square root of 2. And the Pythagorean theorem will give us that. Now the angle we get by cutting a 90 degree angle in half is 45 degrees. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse or 1 over root 2, but if we rationalize that, that's root 2 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the same thing. But we should see that because this angle is cutting every, it's symmetric. And this symmetry means that sine and cosine are meeting. The halfway point is equal in sine and cosine. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent or 1. Now, the only thing we have to le left to do now is figure out what 0 and 90 are. And so a triangle with a zero degree angle is like this. And what we tend to think of is we tend to also, in this kind of reckoning of it, x is equivalent to the cosines, the projection of the cosine. And so here, all 
of the triangles in the x direction or the cosine is 1. It's all adjacent to this angle of 0. And the sine opposite has 0. And tangent opposite over adjacent, 0 over 1. Now notice what happens here. We go from 0 to 1 over 2 to root 2 over 2 to root 3 over 2. And when we go to 90 degrees, everything's in the sine direction, or 1. Well, 1 is the same as root 4 over 2. And so notice this counts up by 1, 2, 3, 4. Root 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, um, root 4 over 2. Signs increase. The amount of the stuff as we move through our unit circle that is projected onto the y-axis increases until it gets to 90 degrees and it's a full 1. And cosines decrease, so this is 0. And here with tangent, we have the problem that we're going to divide by 0, so it's undefined. And this is where these key angles come from. The reason we use these angles are we know exactly what their values are from the root triangles. All right, I'm going to expand upon this in the next video. Maybe, if I can stop this one. I'm here somewhere. Where'd you go?